what is going on pokemon investors today as you guys can see up here i have a spreadsheet that i made i did a video on this a while back and this is talking about booster box to psa 10 price correlation and this these are the updated numbers we've seen a lot of movements in uh, the alternate arts the booster boxes from sword and shield we also have a lot of scarlet and violet era and even some uh, older stuff on here I just wanted to to talk about this because I do think that it's it's interesting when looking at it uh, from an investment standpoint, from collecting, just to see. And I kind of color coded it with bright green is obviously your best buys, and red is the worst because of the price. But I just wanted to kind of talk about this. This is something I found interesting. A lot of people when when they're buying these booster boxes to rip, it's to chase a uh, you know a, a PSA, not a PSA, necessarily a PSA card, but a chase card, right? The best card in the set. A lot of people want to grade it and get a PSA 10. So I think that's an interesting correlation between the prices. So obviously we'll start off real quick just with the Evolving Skies, you know, the big dog. Uh, right now we're at 680 for a booster box, which obviously I haven't read because that is expensive. Now, just because some of these are in red doesn't mean that there's not room for these to run obviously i would say evolving skies i could see that being a fifteen hundred dollar two thousand dollar box potentially in the long term i could i could potentially if this gets some more hype coming back into it i could see this being a thousand dollar box in the relatively near future but you're not able to get as many boxes for your dollar at this price so that's why this is in red the Umbreon has been selling for about 1510 Also, the prices, so this is as of this recording, I got all these, the booster box prices are from TCG Player, and the uh, PSA 10 prices are from last solds on eBay, so fairly accurate info here. Obviously, this Umbreon's the chase, and so the ratio, it's like a 2.2, or 220% from the booster box to the to the PSA 10 price, so that's that's an interesting number some of these you'll, you'll see are real pumped up so um that's why that's why the boxes are a, a better buy next up fusion strike um this is one of the yellow ones one of the few yellow ones uh, although actually i might need to update this i'm gonna say i haven't updated these colors real quick let's just update this real quick like in the 200 range some of these boxes sorry about that have moved so this is like the uh, high ones, like to low to mid 200 range. So Fusion Strike is now kind of yellow, a lot of hype around it. The Gengar has moved up a lot, which has brought this ratio up quite a bit from the last time I did this video. So 244 a box, 720 for the Gengar in a PSA 10. Still a good ratio though. So for people wanting to chase the Gengar, these uh, th these booster boxes are not a bad not a bad price for people hopefully just for people wanting to resell so like you can see the reason that people would want to chase right then we have lost origin which personally i'm i'm all about lost origin uh probably the the set i'm the most heavily invested in uh i love the giratina obviously and i think a lot of the other cards are underrated still but 220 still is chasing fusion strike 220 per box the uh the giratina cooled off a bit i believe we saw some sales over a thousand now it's down to around 900 but what's interesting about this is you can see this 400 percent this is a big uh difference between the box and the chase card so that's why i still think that lost origin is a maybe a better investment because people are going to want to rip to chase that higher dollar card so that's that's why the color coding can kind of help so um just keep that in mind when you guys are looking at this set not that there's anything wrong with Fusion Strike, but I just, that's why I think this shows. Because at the end of the day, a set only needs one chase card, right? And the Giratina is a little bit more unique. That doesn't, that doesn't mean that, you know, the boxes won't sell well because of the whole sets being good, but one chase card can carry a set for sure. Then you have Brilliant Stars, which is still, uh, this is like a darker green, so it's still more affordable. It's like sub 200 at 190 on TCG player. And this Charizard, man, I'm telling you guys, this Charizard is going to, it's going to, it's got a lot more room. So this one isn't interesting when you start looking at it because the ratio isn't as good. And that signals to me that you should be buying the chase card, the chase card in a PSA 10. 
I think there's a lot more room on this card. Not that you can go wrong with the boxes, but brilliant. Um, excuse me, Charizard V at 350, even in a 10. I still think, I still think worst case scenario down the road that this is going to be a $500 card. Like I stand, like this is the hill I will die on. I have multiples of this in a PSA 10, so that's where I'm at uh, with this. I, I do have a, a few um, boxes of Brilliant Stars as well. Um, let's just get into the next one, Chilling Rain. Sorry to get into the 200s here. 214 a box. Uh, the Blaziken is the chase card. If you guys watched Cool Trainer Ryan's stream from quite a while ago now, it's really hard to pull. And this is kind of a similar... Um, Similar thing to over here, but it's just not quite as good of a ratio. So, two two point five times roughly for the Blaziken. So, um, for Chilling Rain, I would lean more towards boxes than than the Blaziken at that price personally. Kind of the same thing going on with uh, it's actually really interesting actually two fifty seven two fifty seven same exact percentage wise. So same thing, although I do like the artwork on the Lugia better, and I do think that uh, there's probably a little bit more room there on the Lugia, but if I was a betting man, I'd go with more Silver Tempest boxes, personally. That's just me, though. Then, let's get into some Scarlet and Violet. A lot of people, it's been so much Sword and Shield, um, but I did put some Scarlet and Violet on here. This was on, all these were on here on the last, uh, the last video as well. Scarlet and Violet does not look quite as good, and that's fine for right now, but obviously, we got green and green here. I do think though that this Miriam card might get overtaken by the Gardevoir potentially uh, as being the best chase card in the set. I, I, I do think that that is possible. Anyways, I don't think you can go wrong getting these boxes at 95. Sub, sub 100 is like bye bye bye. This ratio is not very good because right now you're chasing, what are you chasing? Nothing. But over time, these boxes will go up, the cards will go up. So for me, though, uh, I'm avoiding the Miriam. I'm leaning more into the Gardevoir and boxes of Scarlet and Violet. Then you have Paldea, which is like, you guys know, the, hot, the hottest set in Scarlet and Violet. So people say 130 a box with the Chase being the Magikarp at 700, and what a percent that is. 538%. 5.3 times this booster box price. So... Keep in mind that because the set is so popular, it might receive a reprint. Now, nothing is guaranteed. But with that in mind, this is my mindset for this. I would probably stay away from the Magikarp at this price because if it does get a reprint, the print quality could be better and it could be easier to grade. So that price might tank. That's already a really high dollar card for one of these more newer sets. So I would go with the booster boxes, but I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait for the reprint. If the reprint, even if it doesn't crash it, like below 100 if it crashes at 200 then that would be my point of entry and for me i would be more likely to potentially miss out i'm gonna wait with the risk of missing that they, if they don't reprint it you can't hit every play right so and there's nothing wrong with that you don't have to hit every play and you're never gonna hit every play buying at its low and selling at its peak like that's just not really possible so for paldea that's my mindset i'll wait for the reprint if it comes and then I'm going to strike on the boxes. Okay. Uh, Paradox Rift. I think Paradox Rift is a really good set. Uh, probably not Paldea level, but I mean, you can see the prices here. The Roaring Moon. I really like the artwork on that card. I'm at this price though, still, I'm still kind of avoiding, I'm not picking up the, the Roaring Moon. The percentage, it's like 1.9. So pretty much doubling your, your costs here. I'm kind of staying away from that. And I still think that Paradox Rift is a big pickup even at this $100 level. Obviously, it's always better when it's below, but this is where we're at. I don't think you can go wrong. MSRP is in the 160s, right? So even if you get in at 101, once we get up to that MSRP and it sells out, and then we're at 160 and above, you guys really aren't going to be complaining about your entry, your entry point. Same thing with Obsidian Flames. I think that Obsidian Flames gets a lot of flack uh, just because it's so Charizard heavy, and it's not the strongest set. But right now, uh, you can see it does have a little bit better uh, ratio, 2.1, just a little bit better than Paradox. That Charizard, it, it's at 225 and a 10. So for me, I, I might be avoiding the Zard as well. I'm still going with the boxes because they are more affordable. And that's just, I think this is a sleeper set long term. 
not the strongest set, but Charizard Fatigue, everyone loves Charizard. Eventually, I think that this set, people want to rip, Char rip Zards at the end of the day. Like, so that's kind of a, that's kind of a no-brainer. Another hill I'll die on is that Obsidian Flames is worth, uh, holding, picking up and holding. Then we are getting into some older sets, some Sun and Moon era stuff. I just wanted to throw this in here just to, just to show you guys, like, this is the, uh, the evolving skies of, of, uh, you know, the last era here. So, team up, around just under 2400 a box, which is, inc which is crazy. And you got the lat the Latios, Latios, uh, Lovebirds, PSA 10, last solds were 2,500. So you're pretty much almost at a one-to-one -one ratio there. So for me, personally, I'm avoiding both of these because that is a very large investment. I'd rather get a lot more of the other boxes and have them, you know, potentially 2x, 3x, or more of some of these cheaper boxes and be able to, you know, because if this box, if this box doubles... I mean, that's right. You know, what are the odds of that? This might take a, if it does, it's going to take a long time. So I'm kind of avoiding this set altogether, but it is interesting to s just to see that it's kind of at a one-to-one -one ratio. So that that's interesting. I wonder if we'll, coming back to Evolving Skies, if we could ever see that at a one-to-one -one ratio. If the, if the boxes get up above a thousand closer to this, Will the Umbreon keep rising, or will it stay in the boxes, just keep rising, and then that might be a one-to-one. -one. So that's an interesting comparison to make. I don't know what you guys want to take from that. Um, nothing is for certain, but, you know, it, it has happened in the past, and here's the evidence. So, um, And print, you know, print runs and everything factor into it, so keep that in mind. Then we have Cosmic Eclipse. Uh, this one's interesting, because this is like the opposite of everything here for the most part 940 for a box you got the rcs dialga palkia um like trio card and a 10 last sold for 520 so still very expensive and the boxes are very expensive and this ratio is not good so you're paying a lot to chase not a lot so this is kind of another one that i'm probably going to avoid the boxes and if i'm going to pick something up on this one it's going to be the uh the chase card in a 10 or obviously you guys have to consider if you can get these ungraded and grade them a 10 then that's different so if you're able to go to your lgs your collecticon look at them in person actually you know get a good look at them and see if they're 10s uh potentially then that's where there's a lot of uh more upside it can be hard on ebay uh, wherever you're getting your your raw copies tcg player because you can't see them and no matter how good the photos are once you get them in your hand it's always different then, here's another interesting one, Burning Shadows. So this one's kind of, um, it's kind of more like the Magikarp and Paldea situation. Four twenty-five a box, with the Chase being the uh, the Zard, and it's so hard to grade in a ten, which is crazy. Twenty-four fifties were the last sold. Five point seven times the box value for the PSA ten of the of the Chase Zard, which is insane. So this is similar. This is very similar to to Paldea. Obviously, the numbers are just a little bit different, and I don't see this Magikarp rising to this level. But if you're looking at Burning Shadows, for me, I would go with the boxes, because people are going to want to chase that card, and they see the PSA 10 price, and even though it's hard to grade, because of where the box price is, I think this box still has room to run. So uh, that's why I like this uh, this whole chart this chart and everything. I made this spreadsheet. I'll keep updating this, and I can add more. If you guys want me to add more sets... Leave me a comment. Let me know. Uh, we we can we can expand this. I just want to keep doing this like every month or two or however however long. I'll come back and we'll keep updating these numbers and we'll keep looking at this because I'm very visual and I do think that this is um, relevant information. It does help me kind of think things through. But that's just me. And if you're this far in the video, oh my gosh, we're at 14 minutes. If you guys are this far in the video and you're not already subscribed, just just go down there, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button while you're there. Obviously, you enjoyed the content, you enjoyed the information, you enjoyed the visual uh, little spreadsheet here. And that's going to do it for this one. I'll catch you guys in the next one. And remember, it was never a phase.